Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at how we can style our class selection screen a little bit better, but most importantly we are going to be showing you how to do live 3D character rendering on your user interface. So what I mean by that is you are going to have your player models animated and displayed on your UI screen for class selection so the player knows exactly which class they are selecting. So ignore these characters here, this is just like a visual representation that I did in Photoshop, but that's good what it's going to look like. You're going to have your sword based character on the left, and then you're going to have your magic based character on the right, and then from there just press select to select the character, and then jump into the game. It's really simple and really easy to do, so without further ado, let's jump into the engine and get started. So what you're going to need to do for this then is we are going to need to set up a blueprint actor which contains these two characters and within that blueprint actor we're going to have some cameras and some scene capture components to allow us to do everything that we need. So I'm going to right click in my blueprints folder um, in my blueprints folder in my content browser and add a new blueprint class. Give it the type actor and just set the name to recording actor just like that don't worry about the name too much but once you've got it open it up and then from within here we're going to add a couple of components the first component is going to be with skeletal mesh which is going to be the model that we're trying to display so the character so with the skeletal mesh selected details panel go to skeletal mesh and just set this to your eve character and you can see she has now popped into our scene now we also have another skeletal mesh so I'm going to add that in and then the skeletal mesh for this one is going to be our paladin character as it's called and I'm going to scale it so it fits and then I'm just going to scale this down and leave it there. Now what I'm also going to do is for both of these I'm going to get them to play the idle animations. So not only do they display on the screen, they're also live and they're animated and it's going to add so much more life to them. So animation mode, set this to use animation asset for both of these, so use animation asset and then from there anim to play just type in idle and then just find your standing idle, whichever one you want to use. And this one looks good to me. For that one, go over to your sword character and then just type in idle again. And what you're after is sword and shield idle. And it's just going to stand, look around and looks good to me. What I'm also going to do now then is start working on capturing the two characters. So what I'm going to do is add a camera. And then with this camera, I am just going to move it over here. I'm going to make sure it's facing my two characters. And then what I'm also going to do is just bring it up a little bit, just like that. So we got the camera. This is going to tell the engine what to capture. What we need now is add a component and you are after a scene capture component 2D and this is going to tell the camera to capture what it's capturing and then feed it into a render target. And this render target or the texture target rather can be defined in the details panel with the scene capture component selected. So what we're going to do is with the texture target we are going to create new asset and go to render target and then the name for this is going to be character render and I'm just going to press OK and you can see now if I browse to this asset in my content browser I should have a material that looks a little bit like this and it should capture my two characters. Now what I'm going to do because the resolution is quite low I'm going to adjust this so I'm going to set the X to something like 2048 which is nice and high and then the Y to 1024 and then if I go and compile my recording actor you can see this is updated and the reason why I didn't make both of these the same is because I don't want it to capture a bunch of unnecessary content so stuff at the top and the bottom so I'm just going to do it uh, two by one essentially and this for me looks good now to get the maximum quality when you're doing this render target capture stuff I'm going to see if I can take up as much space in here mm. so what I'm going to do 
is if I just make this nice and big, zoom out a little bit, select my camera, just playing with my windows, and then just move it forwards until they complete and they fill up pretty much the whole box. And I am pretty much happy with that. So what I need to do now then that I've done that is I need to turn this render target into a material. So right click it, go to material, and then with this, we are going to open it up and do a couple of things. Now the things that we need to do are just converting this material or this render target in a way that we can actually get it displayed on the screen. So first things first, I want to crop out the background. And the way I'm going to do this is use the blend mode translucent. And then from this, I am going to drag out from my alpha and I'm going to use one minus and hook it up into opacity just like that. For the base color, I'm going to delete that. And instead, I'm just going to hook it up into the emissive so that it sort of glows on the screen. It just looks really nice. And if I press apply now, give it a couple of seconds to update, you can now see we've got just the character, no background, no nonsense, and it looks really great. So what we need to do now then is get this on the screen. Now we already have a widget, a blueprint for our class selection screen. So open this up and then from here, you are going to want to add an image. So go to common image and then the image that you're after is just going to be your render target. So you're going to want to select your material wherever that was. I think this was in my main blueprint, so it was in content. Yep. And select this character render underscore material. And then for the image, just chuck this on there just like that. Now you can see I've got this little red message that says this material does not use the, U uh, the UI material domain. Just press the little button here to change it. Give it a couple of seconds to update and you can see our characters should pop onto the screen just like this. Now, don't worry about it looking a little bit odd at the moment. It's really nothing to worry about. That is just because we haven't actually brought it into the scene or anything like that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to my blueprint folder, my blueprints, and I'm going to get my recording actor and then just drag it into the scene. And the location for this, I need it to be way off in the distance. So I am going to move it pretty much out into the sky. And the way I'm going to do this is just set my location to something like really high, like just like that. So they're up in the clouds. Or oh, let's add another zero in there. And there you go. And now they are off in the distance. And because they're off in the distance, they are not going to have any opacity in the background. And you'll notice suddenly, the background has gone within our UI widget, which is all good. And if I compile this, press play, you can now see our characters are being rendered on the screen in 3D and it looks really, really great. So now we just need to style the rest of our widget. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just scale this up just like that, drop it in the center. The select for the sword character button, I'm going to drop beneath that character and I'm going to do the same for this character. And then I'm just going to add one more piece of text, which is simply going to say select a class and I'm going to set the type to light so it's nice and thin. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And all I'm trying to do right now is essentially just trying to get it to look like what I have got here in this image. So select a class, nice and big text, and then I'm just going to chuck it at the top here. Have they got something thinner than this? Light, no, that is it. And then this one, I'm going to set the text to mage. And I'm going to set the type to bold, make it a little bit bigger, and place it directly above the head. Whoops. And that looked good to me. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the sword character, get the font size, which is 54. So I'm just going to have to grab that 54. And then the text is going to say warrior. And then I'm just going to drag this above his head. Let's move this up a bit and we are good to go. So 
One other thing that I'm going to do to make it look like we had in the Photoshop document is add some background blur because right now the background just looks really, really odd. It's, you know, it's the complete game. It doesn't look great. So what I'm going to do is in my palette, I'm just going to type in blur, get my background blur, I'm going to drag this into the canvas. And then with this, set the size X and Y to 1920, 1920 by 1080 and just set your blur strength up to three. And what I'm also gonna do, Z order minus one so that it goes behind everything else. And that you can now see has made the background blur, which is great. For the anchoring, I'm gonna anchor this to the whole screen. For the image in the center, anchor it to the center. Do the same thing for your two buttons, just so that way nothing is gonna be going out of place, going where it shouldn't be. And just go through and do this for all of your pieces of text and everything else. And now if we compile this, press play, you can see we've got this class selection screen that's really starting to come to life. And now the only other thing that I need to do is just style these buttons so they look like the ones that we've got in the Photoshop document. So what I'm gonna do is stop this and you need to update and download the latest version of the uh, RPG HUD assets which have these buttons, I've rendered them out for you and all of that good stuff. So what I'm going to do is quickly import these into the engine. So you want to find these within your HUD assets folder, select and select hover and then go to HUD assets and then just click, drag and drop and you're good. Give it a couple of seconds to auto save and now Let's go back to our widget. So that is going to be class select. Go back to our widget and then for normal, I'm going to set, set this to um, select underscore normal, margin should be zero. Then hovered is going to be once again, select hover, margin zero, and then pressed, you guessed it, it's going to be the normal one just like this and what we also want to do is just scale it so the X and Y here is the same as up here so 199 by 114 and you can see now that is looking good and I'm just going to place it directly underneath my character just go through and do the same thing for this one now so select margin zero hovered is the hover one Sometimes doing UI stuff like this can be a little bit tedious, but it's nothing to worry about. You'll get there in the end. And then sizing. And then from here, we are good. I mean, you're gonna wanna spend some time lining up all of your stuff, so your select buttons, making sure they're on the same row and everything, but that is something that I'm gonna leave to you. Same goes for the text. You guys can add your own background images and stuff like that in here. It's entirely up to you. But for now, if I press play, I've got this really cool looking class selection screen. And when I press one of these buttons here, it's gonna open up that specific character. So if I press the magic character, it's gonna open up my magic character, press play, select my warrior, so my sword based character, select him, and we pretty much take control of him and we are all good and ready to go. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything for today's video. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.